Okay, so very, very tragically, Auckland's water supply has been poisoned today um, and yesterday afternoon, sneakily. Um, that's my city, so it's uh, very close to my heart that all our wildlife has been mass tortured to death right now because our country is run by Hitler who, in woman's form. And uh, that chemical is restructuring our water. According to the latest international science all across the world, water has memory, it is pure consciousness, and that kill, uh, killer chemical is now restructuring our water for um, absorption through the skin um, from our shower, at showering, and, uh, and through our food and water supply. Now, I want to talk about justice because my application to stop this and the Wellington attack has been um, with the Court of Appeal for two weeks, the last two weeks. It's been in all four courts for the last five months, and I've had maybe 10 judges now com consistently refuse uh, to protect, grant orders to protect. So be under no illusion, your justice system in New Zealand is not your justice system. Justice is ruling to allow the mass chemical um, poisoning of our ecosystem and divest of, of, of our right to life, health, and property. Now, um, the Court of Appeal application was deliberately um, obstructed. Um, Judge Gibson ruled that he didn't, couldn't, didn't want to read the copy that his printer from the Court of Appeal had printed out that I'd electronically sent. He wanted me to courier a physical copy. Uh, so forget the fact that 1.4 million people were about to be attacked with their water supply toxically poisoned with a reproductive toxin that will cause at minimum mass sterility across our population and infertility, um, massive miscarriages, baby deformities, cancers of the reproductive organs, heart, heart problems, respiratory problems, um, depression, nervous system disorders, altering the mitochondria of the d DNA, so literally reprogram reprogramming your DNA to a torture death chemical, okay? Now, so more important that he get a physical copy of the courier um, of the application than in order to protect 1.4 million people from the poisoning of their water with that chemical, monofluoracetate. So Judge Gibson, okay, I sent a courier. Uh, that courier was sent on DX mail. That's absolutely robust. I put it in the box myself. It goes directly for delivery the next morning. It's overnight. Everyone in the entire system relies on DX mail. Well, apparently, according to the registrar, Chris Abraham, DX mail is suddenly no longer reliable. It completely failed and the application didn't arrive. That's bullshit. I put it in the box myself. So... Um, the I thought they were just maybe lying to delay it for one day. I didn't quite know why, but um, then uh, the next day they were still saying it wasn't there. The next day they were poisoning Wellington, so they were they had deliberately obstructed my electronic application and then uh, buried my courier in order to poison Wellington without having to grant orders. Um, except for the Judge Gibson's order that he wanted the me to send a physical copy. He couldn't just read the physical copy he had in front of him. It's very important that I print it and courier it, then the court print it and, and read it, which they, which he did, you know. Anyway, um, God forbid the court's order to save our lives. No, they've been ordering for the last, um, oh yeah, five months to kill us. So then I sent a second courier on Thursday that arrived at 7.30 a.m. on Friday. Now, Apparently, the registrar was in meetings out of the office until 2.30 p.m. The registrar's job is to sit there and accept applications and put them in front of the judge. Urgent ones all the time, I'm sure. So, he's an urgent one to stop a chemical weapons attack on yesterday against one million people, and the registrar's out of the office and no one's able to put it to the judge until in the afternoon. So, finally, it gets programmed into the system. You know, if there were meetings, I bet it was with the, with the Solicitor General and the Crown and the government deciding how to best divest my case so that they could continue with their crime because that's what's happening so um then uh, it, I, I was told my applications to for injunction because this can uh, this correlates to my application for the appeal was with the judge and I pushed I said if you don't grant if the judge doesn't grant those orders today I've got it on emails and phone calls uh, then the population of Auckland is under risk of attack tomorrow yesterday and today uh, Chris was like, well, you've got that in your application, obviously. I'm like, yeah, but it's important that you let the judge know that he needs to give orders today if he would like to protect the population, you know, from chemical weapons attacks. Look, listen, if, if this was happening in Syria, every single country in the world would have been part of a new coalition to bomb the shit out of it, you know? I mean, it would be, you know, Trump, May and Macron setting up the fake chemical attacks, but it would be blamed on Assad and they'd bomb the shit out of it. You know, where's, where's the bombing of New Zealand right now? Oh, no, it's not happening because most of the countries are involved in this chemical extermination of populations. 
please check my post um but a few down about the um the florida poisoning at the moment these guys look anyway i'll go back to the judges so those interim, I wrote, before the bombing happened yesterday, I wrote again to Winston Peters, Andrew Little, the Minister of Justice. I wrote to the Court of Appeal. I wrote to the International Criminal Court. I wrote to every single UN diplomat um, of every single country. And I said, we are about to be bombed with monofluoracetate in our water supply of one million people. Everyone in the world knows that monofluoracetate is a deadly, deadly killer. Only the New Zealand media are criminal enough to tell you otherwise. Oh, and Jacinda Ardern repeatedly through media interviews and through so many letters she sent out from her, her, her government office in reply to 1080 concerns. Yes, it's safe to eat puha from a 1080 poison stream. Yes, it's totally, 1080 poison water is totally safe to consume uh, after a week. <laughs> it's a total, you know, she's point blank lying. It's point blank lying as a genocidal maniac. She's committing a genocidal extermination of this population. So I wrote to them yesterday and I said, to the Solicitor General as well, uh, the Deputy who defends the Queen of this crime and Jacinda Ardern of this crime and um, and Governor Reddy of this crime, these three deadly killer women who run our country right now. And they are the superiors of this crime because under the legislation they have, um, they all have the power to stop the crime and Jacinda Ardern's the one who gives the budget and um, has the ministers, her ministers working to promote and defend and administer and plan and, and rally the crime publicly and cite it. Article 25A. Very, very criminal. So... Um, I wrote and asked them to stop it, you know, because as any government would, if the governments weren't psychopath and mentally ill and ready to mass torture animals right across our bush and permanently restructure the water to the frequency of the an enhanced version of this chemical and it metabolizes into the deadly, deadly fluorocitrate molecule, which mimics the a citrate molecule, which enters the Krebs cycle, which is the cycle that transmits um, your food and light and water to energy in your body and um, it stops the Krebs cycle so that your body can no longer process energy and uh, your cells begin to mutate and die now when you get cancer your cells it's because your cells are mutating um and that's what triggers cancers and this this is a sterility jug so it, it targets the reproductive organs there are a lot of people out there with children who are in hospital right now as teenagers with reproductive organ cancers okay this is because they're putting 1080 in your water this is government inflicted cancers okay so and and Ardern's new quantities are deadly now the problem is, is i was looking at the Zip were promoting 6 kgs per hectare. That's an each drop enough to easily kill like between 2.4 and 9 million people. And um, and now the new doses listed back on the DOC website are back to like 2.5 kg per hectare. We actually have no idea, no way to know that they're not dropping 10 kg per hectare. None whatsoever. And as they're criminally insane to drop toxic chemicals on a natural wildlife reserve all over the country, uh, they are criminally insane enough to up the doses to Zip's planned dose of 6 kg per hectare so that predators were definitely exterminated. We are the apex predator, humans. Okay, but back to the judges. So I wrote, I wrote again today and I've said, who is the judge? That sat on those orders. Is it still Judge Gibson? Is it Judge Miller, like uh, last month, where he ordered that I didn't have uh, leave to appeal for an interim injunction to stop all the drops around the country? Um, when I did, and I wrote back to the court and argued that I did, uh, you know, I, here are my two minutes with leave to appeal approved from the High Court, because the High Court denied the injunction, and then you have to apply for leave to appeal to, um, to have the Court of Appeal uh, look at the injunction and so Justice Miller denied it so I appealed to the Supreme Court the Supreme Court r repeatedly denied it they are just denying 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 justice because our justice system is lost and with our justice system being lost our democracy is lost it's a theater we do not have our country anymore we are not in control of our country be under no illusion you know if justice existed they would protect the population and the wildlife from mass torture poisoning and they're not. It's very simple. There's no management of this. There's no there's no management of aerial drops of tons and tons of chemical weapons grade poison. None whatsoever. So I've run I've written to ask if it's Justice Miller or if it's Justice Gibson who have my um, Court of Appeal documents and um, who failed to give the order to protect 1.4 million people from having their water poisoned because that is an illegal act. And um, I've argued as such to the International Criminal Court. Now, remember, as painful as it is to see the New Zealand justice system failing constantly, 
that is what is necessary to evidence to the International Criminal Court that so that um, they can take jurisdiction on this crime. And oh my God, I have evidenced it. Everything from the Solicitor General's brother taking my case against her and being really aggressive on the rulings to... Um, to the August 21st three hour hearing at the High Court I had for the injunction to stop all the drops across the country um, you know being very clearly predetermined and then having orders just saying that they don't have the power to stop a government program yeah the court has the power to stop a chemical extermination of a population in order to artificially induce climate change which is what's happening here and Ardern if she gives the open speech it, I tell you what is your, is your mark to know what's happening in the world if Ardern gives the opening speech at UN Climate Week, although I've heavily lobbied that she shouldn't, um, if she does, then you can know that the UN, the identity of the UN, is to chemically exterminate our populations right across the world and render a one-world government. Now, administrators within the UN do plan that anyway, but the UN has two factions. One is the administrators, who are arguably deeply corrupt and need to be cleaned out and all fired and hung for their crime. And the second part is all the nation states. And if you look at, for example, the Security Council votes to protect Syria, you have to understand that that vote is honest and that the UN diplomats have power um, with their votes. However, I have communicated our chemical extermination to them repeatedly and it is silence. At first they would respond to me and then it's silence. Now, of course, I'm, um, I'm uh, is it Jerry, the New Zealand guy? He'll be Goebbels' big lie propaganda guy over there at the UN saying, oh, no, it's fine. We're just, you know, we're just protecting the birds by torture poison all over their ecosystem. <laughs> That they eat, but but we're protecting them by poisoning them. <laughs> and everyone will go, oh, okay, because <laughs> that makes sense. And uh, and the poison has cognitive functions, so because we put a different colour in it and a different scent, it only kills the possums. No, sorry. And uh, let's forget to tell everyone that we drop it deliberately in the water supply. It doesn't matter what the permit says, they drop it in the water supply. Now, that's the other thing, the Hanuids drop. They say they're turning off the dams and protecting the water supply. No, they're not. There are two streams, starting with M in that area, and that feeds into the alternative water supply, and they're bombing the shit out of it. So monofluoracetate right through the streams that feed into the alternative water supply. So they're, it's like tricky, like... We'll close down these dams, so we'll protect your water supply, but we'll, over here we'll bomb your alternative water supply and we won't tell you. <laughs> so South Auckland are about to be mass murdered by chemicals over time. This is a chemical that over sublethal doses, bioaccumulating toxicity in your body, mutating your cells, killing your cells, you'll feel gastro pain and, and flu-like symptoms and, and, and agony, um, respiratory difficult, heart problems, um, maybe you know eat the wrong sandwich of a cow that was sent to the works because it was 1080 poisons, feeling sick, and uh, die of a heart attack overnight, six-week cancers with the right dose, of the fluorocitrate molecule traveling through your water supply um, or by the inha by the fact that it changes the frequency of the water to be this chemical, um, you will have sterility over time. And sorry, I'm massaging my temples because I have been under systematic EMF frequency attack um, for the last two months because um, of doing these cases. But right now I'm still alive, so that's the main thing. I'll keep fighting for now. Um, until I die of bone cancer because it's been government inflicted or intelligence agency inflicted because this is the world's biggest crime. It's the Queen, it's the Pope, it's Richard Branson, it's Bezos, it's Bill Gates. They're all in on it. You know, the Club of Rome, the giving, the giving pledge, you know, the Club of Rome, all of them, the giving pledge, arguably, possibly all of them, a lot of them. This is the, the age of irony where they act like heroes and give to philanthropy while killing you. It's brilliant. I mean, it's a brilliant plan. I mean, if you if you did have all the power and money and you decided that 7 billion people in the world was too much and you didn't like people like Richard Branson's prediction that within 20 years agriculture, dairy and beef would be over, yeah, sure, if you poison it, it'll be over. If you poison it and force the divestment of farmers because MPI have a civil military force raised to intimidate farmers all around the country and force the slaughter of their healthy herds or now poisoned herds, sure, yeah. You'll have uh, you'll have no sheep and beef because all the animals will be sterile or poisoned in agony, dying with all their mutated forms of uh, you know swollen joints and mastitis and pneumonia, which is 1080 poisoning symptoms. Exactly the same, exactly the same as the 1080 poisoned possums. Exactly the same as TB. Exactly the same as Mycobacterium bovis, which is what they artificially inject into uh, animals to cause TB. TB, Mycoplasma bovis, and Mycobacterium bovis are the same. It is the fake disease cover narratives used to justify the symptoms of animals from 1080 poisoning.
And that is the big biosecurity fraud that our, our government and Ardern is inflicting so that she can state force slaughter, call all the farmers' herds her national herd like a communist because this is communism, trust me, and um, and uh, divest farmers. We, we are heading towards uh, the bio biodiversity um, UN plan, global plan. Uh, with the wilderness, 80% of our country in wilderness, and um, our water completely restructured to the frequency of death, and um, and our human population geoengineered to sterility and death over the next 10 years, and couple that with their artificial weather creation technology and their fucking EMF um, frequency weapons to, <laughs> I'm not joking about that, um, to target people like me who are actually doing cases capable to stop them, well... We have a new frontier of warfare, and this is the Third World War. It's the chemical extermination of populations. Again, you have to look at that post of what's happening in Florida um, at the moment to the ecosystem. They've been poisoning it the same as they're poisoning us here. Mass poisoning of an ecosystem in order to artificially inflict climate change and then give speeches with, with horns on your head at the opening of UN Climate Week to say that... Um, you know, we have to make, you know, we have to treat climate change as our, as our major issue. They are manufacturing climate change. You know, I, I have done, I've got seven cases with the International Criminal Court. Um, one of them is on the Syrian war, but, and one of them is on this case. But the rest of them, five others on major ecosystems, defending major ecosystems right around the world by my interpretation of the Rome Statute against environmental destruction. And, um, you know, there's, there's, I, I, and I, you know, it's funny because I, I never could have imagined that they were, I knew they were creating climate change by the industrial destruction and the direct contamination of our water, air and soil. So, you know, the massive fracking that New Zealand First wants to push through and um, with Labour um, to contaminate all of our groundwater. That is what causes the environmental imbalance and kills the earth. But they are talking about this... Um, bullshit about carbon where it's 0.4 percent of the atmosphere i mean it's 0.04 percent it's one and in, every industrial molecule of carbon industrial dirty industry carbon dioxide is only one in every 86,800 molecules so what are the rest of the 86,800 molecules doing you know <laughs> it's only 33 of those molecules of carbon at co2 and only one is out of you know is industrially induced and that metabolizes um out of the ecosystem within three or four years anyway naturally so it's like you know blaming the breath of life for the contamination of the world it's just absolutely illogical but you know tell that to the the mind numbed brainwashed idiots who are saying we need to stop climate change listen they are using harp stations all around the world to inflict weather forced weather you know when the when the snow dump comes in the south island you do a burn test on that snow and you see if it burns or disintegrates if it melts into water or if it disintegrates because if it disintegrates it's artificial snow and it's been created through heavy metals through silver iodine being dropped right through the ecosystem so that it forms the snow particles and it induces unnatural levels of snow and unnatural temperatures so they are artificially creating this on us inflicting this on us and um you know, that coupled with the chemical extermination, I mean, it, it, poisoning our entire ecosystem, unbalancing the earth. I mean, they have just um, poisoned the f um, fault, entire fault line of the f um, south southern Alps and the west coast. So, you know, and then they're, they've got their trusty news hub criminal um, public incitement crime people um, telling you that there's going to be an earthquake there because it's been predicted for 300 years. <laughs> like... No, there's going to be an earthquake because frequencies have unbalanced the plates. Um, frequency technology has been used to shift the plates and then chemical poisoning that the earth soaks up and screams out in agony, the plants and the soil and, and, and into the underground water. Um, and while the earth is screaming in agony, that is also potentially enough to shift the plates. So, you know, this has been artificially engineered. This is the biggest crime in the world. And New Zealand has been in the midst of it because Ardern, the, the modern day equivalent to Hitler through running this open air extermination program on us, is, uh, is running their kill program with a big smile on her face. I really want to know what operation she had or what happened in the mental hospital when she went there two years ago. She was checked into a men mental hospital. Barry Soper reported on it two years ago. I would love to know if she was chipped into the artificial um, t intelligence singularity, you know, um, because, you know, we are living in the time of EMF frequency, artificial intelligence warfare. And, you know, so much of it is not communicated to the everyday person. You don't know what's going on. You know, I only 
realised that the EMF, you know, having been aware of it for a long time, but that it's been used because I've been systematically attacked for the last um, two months by it and really, really high frequency attacks now, you know. I mean, it's so painful to live with a swollen brain and aching, aching temples. It's not like a headache. It's like it's like frequency has attacked my temples, so it's incredibly painful. And um, the other week when they got me, um, my entire brain was swollen against my skull. It was just awful. And I seem to just recover and they get me again, so um, very frustrating. But it's the price because this is the world's biggest crime. And if, you know, because our justice system is, is behaving in such a, a way of corruption, and I've said this so many times now to Andrew Little, I'm not getting responses from him, you know, which is unacceptable. But he's presiding over the death of democracy and the death of justice. He, the, the justice system is behaving like a mafia. The, ju- the law protects us from this crime. There's no question. Any judge who does not order that these drops are stopped um, and they, and does not and blocks the evidence being judged like they're not judging the evidence they're using technical excuses not to you know like the high court's ruling on my injunction um, hearing which is that they don't have the power to stop the crime but the, even the way the minutes are written they're completely biased they're, they're to, written to discredit the um, application and to um, uh, to shield those who are criminally liable from responsibility to shield the Queen Ardern and Reddy and the problem is, is, you know, I've said this before, the only way to get rid of the judges who are acting in this criminal way is through the Queen, under the legislation. So, you know, and uh, unfortunately, our elections are counted at a nest down in Christchurch. It's very unlikely that they are um, genuine elections now. Not with this crime going on. Not with National and Labour being effectively the same party. They both run an austerity economy. They'll both crash the economy prior to 2030 so that they can divest us of the NZD and install carbon currency. That's the global currency. Um based on something that is just completely irrational because carbon dioxide is the breath of life. The Paris Agreement doesn't tax carbon monoxide. Your fuel fumes out your exhaust. You know, I mean, that's lot. Everyone thinks carbon, carbon monoxide, you're being taxed for your car fumes, your direct pollution of the air. No, no. Carbon dioxide, what you breathe out to give life to the plants in the ocean and what the ocean and plants breathe in to give life to our entire food supply and living ecosystem. I mean, it's just a joke. The irony is just beautiful. As I said, I mean, if you wanted to depopulate the world and um, take, you know, be the first ever global government, this is just genius. It's a brilliant plan, except it's highly criminal when everyone's dying and Ardern is leading it for New Zealand. And Winston keeps her in power and all her little soldiers stand by her and um, let their people be exterminated. We're being chemically exterminated and everyone in power, I mean, I've said this before as well, if Kevin Short and Mike Bush were real men, they'd be using their police and their army to protect us. They're not. They're facilitating the crime. They're, they're traitors. They're traitors to their nation. Kevin Bush and Mike, sorry, Mike Bush and Kevin Short, traitors to their nation. That's the head of our military and head of our police. Traitors. Absolute traitors. You know, so sick. They are they are using their, their manpower to kill the families of the people that work for them. But, I mean, you know, there's so much propaganda around because... You know, our, you know, John Key gave a loan to News Hub, for example, to for American Oak Tree Company to own our um, media and um, feed us propaganda. And um, who's the rat-looking guy, the old rat who owns Murdoch, who um, owns New Zealand Herald and a whole lot of the other media, and Gina Reinhart, the obese person who thinks we should all be paid $1 a day labour. Um, she owns all the mining. She owns... Um, stuff news i mean there's just a whole lot of um criminal industrialist uh genocidal maniacs who own our media and uh, the people who work for them are criminally liable for publicly inciting this crime under article 25f of the rome statute so i hope they're ready for their liability at some stage because unless no justice exists in the world there's no way that the queen are doing and ready are not going to be held accountable for chemical attacks systematic chemical attacks on their population that's what's happening right now i swear to god if i had money in an army i'd bomb the shit out of parliament <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have money. I don't have an army, so I'm allowed to say that because it's not physically possible. But in a fantasy, um, that's what I do right now. But unfortunately, I can't. So that's all right. Um, but I mean, honestly, that's how broken the system is. We need to be put into a state of emergency. And um, I don't know. Maybe another country would consider coming to our aid because if. Um, but um, but how many of these countries know exactly what is happening? You know. They know that we're exporting poison product to the world. China has um, developed a test for 1080, you know. 
So they know that we are exporting poisoned milk to them and that a lot of their mass increase of cancers is, is probably coming from consuming our poison product. You know, there's a mass cull of the population. These people in power believe that the population needs to be decreased. And this is their solution, chemical extermination. Now they're foolish. It's a bad plan. It should be abandoned. There's a much better solution. And that's called uh, stop the massive billionaires having, a, you know, completely unbalanced um, uh, control of the economy and, um, and, and money. It's crazy. It's, uh, it's irrational. And it makes them falsely believe they have godlike powers and they're using that to mass murder. It's a genocidal extermination. They're so criminal. But imagine if... Um, so under the Rome Statute, the court has the power to seize the... Sorry, I'm giving myself a permanent brain massage because I'm just in such pain. And I've never had headaches in my life, and it's not a headache. It's just aching, 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 bruised temples. Oh my God, it's terrible. I'm going to die by le- government order lobotomy or intelligence agency I don't obviously know exactly who's inflicted it but it's come through the phone line it's come through using my google book it's come through um being shot out of helicopters following me so um it's like an electricity jolt through your head or it's happened to my breast as well it's fucking terrible anyway I wasn't up with still alive um okay so what was I talking about anyway so I will again complain about the judges they they allowed the mass poisoning of 1.4 million people it's unacceptable that our justice system is stolen like this I don't accept it you know um I had someone say to me yesterday you know that all the judges go to the same schools and um the same law firms they're part of the same clique and you know I don't know what they what they have to do um that's terrible and evil to get a judgeship so so that they give whatever orders they're directed to give but you know right now the orders that they're giving us to kill their own people so these people are real traitors you know I mean it's unacceptable whoever the well all of the judges involved are traitors because they've all ordered your death and um, should the International Criminal Court I have argued this I have argued their liability to the International Criminal Court so should that case come to fruition which if there's any justice in the world it will because you know we were really failed this week by them because the or we've had 1.4 million people attacked by chemical weapons attacks and no one said a fucking thing. I've communicated this very clearly to everyone in leadership at the UN, to all of the nation states, and no one said a thing. Silence, you know? And, um, you know, uh, the only people who get airtime are fake as well. Look at that, you know... What's her name does this twenty four hour fake claim um that in the environment court that had absolutely no possibility of winning and um and because doc owned the environment court and she's an ex doc lawyer and um you know it, it's so ridiculous because all the media are all over it and using it to discredit ten eighty like it was just a big staged platform really well I've had twenty applications in for injunctions I've had three hour hearing I've had conferences I've had everything no media you know. I've sent the press releases to media. They know. I Three days before the Radio Live interview, I sent a press release to media calling them traitors, you know, because they are. And um, three days later, Sue Gray's commandeering a Radio Live interview and setting up a whole lot of interviews. I mean, that's just response. That is. That's direct response to my work. Now there's rumours she's saying she's going to do a criminal claim. Um, but she'll do it against someone really low level, you know, so that... Um, it again gives a competing narrative for the media to promote um, that's not real um, when my criminal claim is real and it's been five months in process and completely divested across all four courts and, you know, ten judges now. Regardless, our justice system is the people's justice system and it is unacceptable that these judges keep doing this. They are ordering our death and they are criminally liable for it. It is very obvious from their conduct that they are managing justice in a way that is inconsistent with justice and it's not legal. Now, under the law, the only person who can remove them is the is the queen. But that needs to change or we need a new queen. And, you know, the case that I've got is against the royal family because they have been chemically putting um, fluoride and 1080 in our water to chemically harm us since the Queen came to reign in 1953. It's a chemical extermination. And um, now they're going for world government. I mean, it makes sense if you had 53 countries under your control, you definitely want to try for 197. And that's what's happening right now. And that's why my brain's being attacked because they don't like the opposition. Well... Silence at the UN. If Ardern gives the opening speech at the UN next week, you can know the identity of the UN is to kill you. 
you know. And there's a whole lot of people in there who control it who already have that agenda. But, you know, if the nation's state leaders have all been informed what she's doing, so if they allow this, then uh, that's the identity of the UN. It's tragedy. And uh, climate change is being artificially inflicted. And all those who stand against the big lie are being um, inflicted with brain disease by EMF frequencies in their brain. That would be me right now. Oh, I don't know what else to say, except I will update you on who the judge is who is responsible for not giving the orders and sitting on the orders so that we could be chemically attacked in Wellington and Auckland. Judge Gibson it was in Wellington and Judge Miller before that at the Court of Appeal. I've named all the judges before in the High Court. Um, Justice Churchman, uh, Wolford, Courtney, Fitzgerald, um, uh, Jagos, uh, um, Ryan at the District Court, um, Dawson, I think, at the district court as well. Um, the registrar at the Court of Appeal that has delayed is Chris Abraham, the registrar at the Supreme Court that um, has just um, illegally refused um, about seven, nine applications now. Um, that's Kira McCarran. It's really important that you know these people's names because in history it will show that they were the people who tried to kill you. Okay. <laughs>